Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a comparison with all three Keurig K Duos that Keurig makes. So this one is the K Duo Essentials. It's only sold at Walmart and it's $100. This one is just the K Duo. It's $170. This is the K Duo Plus and it sells for about $230, but you can get it on sale for about $200. Maybe about $190. i have seen it. I've seen this for about $150 at Walmart. I've seen this on sale, I think, for maybe $90, but normally it's $100. Bucks. Again, this one here is exclusive only at Walmart. And Walmart doesn't sell either one of these. So, with that being said, they obviously made a K-Duo that's a little cheaper. And it's got a lot of the features of these but it is a lot cheaper and it doesn't have a lot of the features that these other two have. These are kind of your premium models. This is your really premium model. So let's start with the $99 one. Again, both these are K duos or all three of these are, they do K cups. So this one was kind of confusing because I, I was like, where was the K cup going? But it goes in the back. They do coffee. Here's where the coffee goes. Here's where the coffee goes, and here's where the K-Cup goes. So I'm going to first do a K-Cup on each one, and then I'll brew a pot of coffee. But let's just talk about some of the features. So I I rate them all the same as far as where the K-Cup goes. They're all single needle up at the top, and they all have the standard needle basket at the bottom with the single needle. So I rate these all the same. This is This is plastic. This is plastic. This is kind of a different, it, it feels more metal. There is some metal there. Um, now here's one of the weaker points. So I consider this a weak point on this K-Duo from Walmart. It works, but this filter basket and this slide that goes on is a very, it's a big weak point in my opinion. I can see this getting broke so easy. Whereas over here, I like this. You got a big lift up lid. You can, you can get to the filter basket. It's not sliding on a track. You put it in. Over here, it slides on a track, but it's a little well more well built. Now this is plastic. It I could see this getting damaged over time, but it is pretty stout. And you take the filter basket out like this. I, I kind of like this design. This is, you know, the K Dual Plus is a really really nice design. So the brew head, you've got the standard brew head here. Here the brew head. You can sort of see where the water comes out. And down here, you've got, you can see where the brew head is down there. These all take standard K-Cups. You can brew coffee in these. You can brew, ca or brew cappuccinos, latte, any kind of K-Cup that's a standard K-Cup will fit. Now, some of the reusable K-Cups do have a hard time. I'm not sure what's going on, but some of the reusable K-Cups don't fit in here real well. You just can't close the handle, and I've noticed that too. So the next big thing is, so again, these brew K-Cups and coffee. So the coffee pots, let's take a look at those. You're going to notice they're all different. So here we have a stainless steel one. And the reason this is a stainless steel one, it's going to use the pot to keep the coffee warm. You don't have a warming plate with this one. With this one, you've got a warming plate, just like a normal coffee maker. It's going to keep your coffee warm. And same with this one. It's got a warming plate. It's going to keep your coffee warm for two hours. These are kind of standard. They got a, a hinge lid. They are a little different. I've noticed they both pour. They pour really good. They all clean up really good. This one, again, this is double wall stainless steel. Now, this is 12 cups. They're all 12 cups. They're all, even though normally like a stainless steel one, they have to downsize it a little bit because these are bigger pots, but this is actually 12 cups too. They all have pause brewing so that you can take it out. There's a little plunger that comes down on the bottom of the, the brew basket that prevents the coffee from coming out. They all fit in their perspective thing really well. Now the next major design, you're going to see these two. You can, now you can't do them at the same time on any of these. You, if you're brewing a pot of coffee, you can't fix a K-cup. And when you're fixing a K-cup, you can't brew a pot of coffee. 
That's that goes true for all of these. But these two have two distinct areas. And on this one, I was a little confused. It's got one area. So when you want to do a K cup, you've got to remove this. You put your K cup back here, and you'll notice the water. It's got two areas. So when you do coffee, it comes out here. When you do a K cup, it comes out right here. So you got to put your uh, glass right down here. This does have a removable tray. You can get a taller cup in there. Same with over here. Removable tray and a removable tray. So when you fix a, a K cup, this is what it looks like. You've got to set the coffee pot off to the side. So this coffee maker, when it's done brewing its pot of coffee, it shuts off because it doesn't need to keep the coffee warm. The coffee pot's going to do that. These two will keep the warming plate on for two hours, and then they automatically shut the warming plate off. Okay, let's talk control panels. Now, here's where these are really different. The cheaper one's got basic controls. You're going to pick K-cup or coffee pot, and it's 12, 10, or 8, and these are cups or ounces. So there's no on off button. You know, when you want to turn it on, you just press the button and then that activates it. It's got an add water light and a descale light. Now these two are programmable. You now you can't program the K cup side, but you, if you want a pot of coffee in the morning, you can program these to come on. So again, they saved a bunch of money by not, by not putting a display on these. So these have clock displays. And again, you can program, it's got an auto button auto button and a clock you can program this get your coffee in your water in and you'll have a, pot, a fresh pot of coffee in the morning whatever time you set it for and it works really good again it doesn't do a k-cup automatically back to the control panel so th these two do 6 8 10 and 12 these are not lit up right now but if i press a button 6 8 10 12 this one does 6 8 10 12 either cups or ounces. This one only does 8, 10, or 12, so they don't have a 6. So the smallest you can do is an 8 ounce or 8 cups of coffee. But you can do 6 cups of coffee or a 6 ounce with these two. Another thing, these two have the strong brew. And the strong brew is only for the K-cup side. Again, this has a strong brew. You can do a strong brew on the K-cup, not the coffee maker. If you have any questions at all, I have detailed video or videos on all three of these coffee makers, how to set the program, um, how to make coffee, and just a really detailed comparison on all of them and how to descale all of them with vinegar and the Keurig solution. You can see this, they all fit under a kitchen cabinet. Even this one, this is your tallest one. This one's pretty comparable. This one lifts up, but they all fit under a standard kitchen cabinet, which is really nice. The only drawback is going to be is getting to the water reservoir. So one of the main benefits that I see with this machine is that let's talk water reservoirs. I love this water reservoir. So it's a big handle. It's a nice big container. It holds enough for 12 cups. It's got markings on the side. Um, it's just really nice. All Keurig uh, water reservoirs should be like this. It's easy to handle, easy to clean. Very, very nice. It just fits right on the, very easy to put on. Let's go over here to these. I can see these are okay water reservoirs. You're going to want to use something else to fill the water up with. Um, a lot of times people just use the coffee pot, but getting them on and off is a, it's just a little awkward, you know, no real nice handle. This one's even a little more awkward because um, it's kind of curved. They both got markings on them. Or all of them have markings on them. They all have a three-prong uh, cord, really heavy-duty cord. Now, back to the water reservoir on this plus one. You can move this water reservoir. You can put it on the back or on this side. This makes this very versatile. So this whole water reservoir, this platform that it sits on, moves either to the back or to the right side. So if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can move the water reservoir. You can have it sitting over there or on the back and make this a really skinny machine. Very, very versatile, but kind of expensive. Okay, so let's do a cake up real quick. 
Let's put a K cup in. This one I gotta do just a little more work. I gotta make sure. Again here, I just simply press this K button and then the eight ounce here, I gotta turn it on. I gotta press the K button, eight ounce there. K cup, eight ounce there. Now let's talk uh, noise level. This is super, super quiet. These two are noisy. Anytime they're boiling that water, they just sound noisy. They're, you can hear that water boiling and they're just, compared to this one, when this one, I was doing this one by itself, it is not noisy at all. And this one's the fastest. These two I consider about the same. It's, I think they have a lot of the same internal components. So you can see in less than a minute, you're gonna have an eight ounce cup of coffee. Now this one, you do hear the water boiling just a little bit. These two are really gonna kick into high gear to boil that water. So here's where the sound comes in. Both of these are pretty, pretty loud. Now it doesn't last. Once the water gets up to temperature, they quiet, every, all of them quiet down. I've done a taste test. They all taste the same. This is cool. These cool off really, really quick. But I've got the same temperature in all of them. 156, but it's cooled off really quick. Normally coming out of there, it's about 165, 170. Let's look at cleanup. Again, it looks like it does a really good job with the K-Cup. This one's just a, this one I have a tendency that you had to really watch the needle on this one because you got to kind of stick your hand in there, but it, they all look like they do about the same job with the K-Cup. Again, I've done taste tests. To me, they, they all taste the same. Now, but these do have strong, you can do a strong brew. To me, it, it, you do get just a little bit of a stronger taste, not much. Now I failed to mention was they all three can take a water filter, but Keurig sells two different kinds. This is the tall handle, which goes in that one. And these are the short handles. Now these do not come with water filters. These are about $14 extra. Okay, so let's do the coffee maker side. They all take standard basket style filters and you can use a reusable filter in them too. Eight to 12 cup, just paper style filters. They all recommend one tablespoon of coffee grounds, just normal coffee grounds per cup you're gonna brew. And again, you don't judge, you don't um, decide how much this is going to brew by putting in the, in the amount, like a normal coffee maker, whatever water you put in is what it brews. Here we select. We select either eight, 10 or 12 cups, six, eight, 10 or 12 cups. So if I'm, I'm gonna do an eight cup, so I'm just gonna hit this button and it'll brew eight cups of water through there. So I've got eight tablespoons of coffee in each one of these. And if I was gonna do six, I couldn't do six on this one, but I would just put six tablespoons. I've And they, the maximum is 15 tablespoons of coffee grounds if you want a really strong coffee for a 12. I have tried it, it does work. Um, these things do really well. They don't overflow their filters. Keurig's got a, does a really good job with brewing their coffee. So again, we just want to make sure we put this in. We're going to push this down and push this in. Make sure I put the coffee pot back. Make sure this is empty. I had a review, um, a viewer comment that they, so see these, you can tell they're empty. You can't tell this is empty. If you forget to have stuff in here, it overflows and it makes a big mess. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to hit the coffee pot side, eight ounce or eight cups and brew. Turn it on. Coffee, eight cups, brew. Coffee pot side, eight. You know, this had a nice display letting me know that I was selecting cups. Same with this. These displays are really close to being the same. 
So Keurigs brew their coffee a little bit different. They use a water pump. Um, they heat the water, and then you can hear a water pump pumping the, the hot water on top of the coffee grounds and in there. But they do a really good job. They don't sound like a, like a normal drip coffee maker where it's really boiling the water. And So this one started brewing first, but this one's not far behind. And I can, I can take a sneak peek at this. You know, there's the water coming out in the steam. I can't take, I can't take a look at those. So the only way you're going to know when this one's done brewing is that little half moon light goes out and this coffee maker turns off. So this light and this light will go out when this is done brewing. Otherwise you can't see it. You can see the water going down. And again, when it's brewing coffee, this one's the quietest. This one, it kind of, it gets loud and then quiet, loud and quiet as that heats that water and uses that pump. Same with this one, loud then quiet. But when you do this one by itself, it's really quiet. Let's just take a quick sneak peek. Yeah, see it's doing a really good job, not overflowing the filter. Again, I've got detailed reviews on all three of these coffee makers. Okay, so this one just finished up. The red light turned on here to let me know the warming plate is on. I can tell this one's getting ready to finish by the way it sounds. This one just turned off, so it's done. And this one should be finishing up any second now. Yeah, about 10 seconds later. This one, it turned red to let me know the warming plate is on. We can see, yeah, we did a, it did a good job with the coffee grounds. Same with this one. And same with this one. Yeah, they all look about the same. Let's just see how they all pour. Yeah, they all pour really nice. I don't you know, this one might pour the best. Um, my pick, you know, you're gonna have two differences here. I really do love this one, but you may not like this, the stainless steel uh, pot and it's got two places. So you got some, you're always juggling, taking the pot out to put your cake up your, uh, when you do a cake up. So this one's a little different, but it takes up the least amount of room and it looks the best. These are kind of big and bulky. Um, and this one does programmable. Other than the display and the programming part, I like this one better because of the, the filter basket. Again, this one I think is just going to be a weak point. I hope the video helped. That's the intention of my videos. I'm gearing up for a big video where I'm going to review every Keurig that they currently sell. I've got every Keurig that's on the Keurig website right now. And I'm going to be doing... Um, just one big video showing you all the Keurig machines and kind of where I think they all fall in line. Thanks everybody for your support. I recently surpassed 3,000 subscribers. Never dreamed in a million years that I'd have 3,000 subscribers. And again, I'm just going to keep doing my videos to help people with coffee. I'm new to coffee and I just want to help people. Thanks everybody for watching. And if you could, please like and subscribe.